Scourge by Fire, Chapter 7. Gerald and Angel burst in the door together, laughing. Hey, Aunt Queen, Gerald began. Can we have some... He stopped suddenly and screamed. Aunt Queen, Aunt Queen, what happened? Queen did not respond. Her eyes were rolled back and she didn't seem to be breathing. I gotta call 911. Angel, run next door and call Mama. Do you know the number? Angel, glad to have something to do, nodded, terrified, and left. She could hear Gerald screaming into the telephone. Come quick, it's my aunt. She fell out of her wheelchair and she's not breathing. Yes, yes, the address is 6254 Chamber Street. Please hurry, oh please hurry. He remembered seeing CPR on television, but no one had ever given him lessons. He tried anyway. He crawled over to Aunt Queen on the floor, tears streaming down his face, and tried to breathe into her tight and silent lips. Don't die, Aunt Queen, he moaned. Please don't die. He could hear the sirens in the distance. As the ambulance screamed into the driveway, Gerald jumped up to rush the paramedics to Aunt Queen. He almost bumped into Angel, who was coming back into the house. Did you call them? He nearly screamed at her. There was nobody home next door. I even tried the next house. I'm sorry, Gerald. Don't be mad at me. Sorry. I didn't mean to yell. Come on, the ambulance is here. You can call Mama while they're helping Aunt Queen. The ambulance drivers, dressed in blue, seemed to Gerald to take an awfully long time while they poked and measured and assessed Aunt Queen. Is she going to be all right? He asked. We're doing our best, young man. Did you see her fall? No, we were outside. We came in and she was just laying there. Well, you did the right thing by calling us quickly. We're going to take her to the hospital now. Is there another adult around? Angel spoke up. My mama's coming. Then she looked over at the ambulance driver. I remember you. You tell funny stories. The driver glanced down at her. Of course. How you doing, pumpkin? No more breaks and bruises? Angel looked scared then and ran and hid behind Gerald. The driver looked at him and said, Take care of her, kid. I gotta go. Your aunt's gonna be at General Hospital. Gerald looked at Angel with puzz puzzlement. What was that all about? Oh, he came to school on safety day, Angel said without looking at him. Gerald was about to say something else when Monique burst in the door. I just saw the ambulance leave. What happened? I think Aunt Queen had a heart attack, declared Gerald, who was really starting to feel scared. She looked really bad. She wasn't breathing, he whispered. Well, let's get down to the hospital, said Monique. Jordan's waiting in the car. He's not real happy because there's a baseball game on TV and he had to leave before it was over. Hurry! Gerald glanced at Angel, but she only looked at the floor. He locked the back door as they left, and somehow he knew that things would never be the same. Jordan drove them to the hospital, not speaking the whole time. Gerald and Angel sat in the back seat, frightened of him and frightened of what was going to happen. When they got to the hospital, Jordan growled at Monique in his gravelly voice. Call me when you're ready to come home. I can't be sitting around no hospital all day. With that, he was gone. Monique asked at the desk, and they were shown a, to a small waiting room. Gerald didn't like hospitals. He remembered when he had been there before. He felt hot and scared and unable to breathe. Angel kept her head down and wouldn't look at any doctor or nurse who passed by and refused to speak. Finally, a tired-looking doctor dressed in blue scrubs walked into the room. Miss Sparks? Monique looked up, hopeful, trusting. Is my aunt going to be okay? I'm sorry, ma'am. We did all we could. She was gone before she even got here. Please accept my condolences. Monique sobbed. Gerald, who hoped he had misunderstood, who knew he would die himself without Aunt Queen in his world, said hoarsely, Is she... Is she dead? Yes, son, replied the doctor. I'm so sorry. Gerald dropped to the floor, buried his head in his hands, and sat there moaning and rocking, moaning and rocking. The doctor, who knew that grief had to work itself out, patted him on his head and left quietly. Monique looked at Gerald and felt she ought to do something, but she was afraid to touch him or to try to hold him. She was afraid that he would blame her for Aunt Queen's death. So she sat there, wiping her tears with a Kleenex, and watching her son shudder with grief in the middle of the waiting room floor. Angel, who had been watching quietly, walked slowly over to Gerald, sat down next to him, and took his hand in hers. 
She held his hand, which was cold and trembling, in her small, warm ones. She said nothing. Gradually, his breathing returned to normal, and he was able to look at her. He saw pain in her large eyes, and he saw understanding. She helped him up then, and they walked hand in hand over to Monique. Gerald looked at Monique blankly. blankly. Now what? he asked dully. Monique, once again trying to fill the void, but not knowing how, said bluntly, It looks like this turned out to be a pretty awful birthday for you. I'm really sorry. So I guess you're going to come and live with us after all. It'll be great, you'll see. She was nervous. Let's go call Jordan. He'll be so pleased to have you, that you'll be living with us. She sounded as if she were trying to convince herself more than Gerald. Gerald sighed and with shoulders stooped, followed Monique to the telephone. He didn't care about anything anymore. He and Angel stood there, listening to Monique's side of the conversation. Yes, but... I'm sorry. But we talked about... Well, it's not my fault. I'm sorry. How was I supposed to know? But you promised. I'm sorry. Well, it's too late now. I'm sorry. It'll be all right. You'll see. I'm sorry. She hung up the phone, turned to the children, and smiled brightly. He's really happy about it, Gerald. Really, he is. Gerald just looked at her and sighed. The only thing that kept him from bolting out of the hospital door and down the street into the darkness of forever was the warm little hand that held his, passing its fragile strength to him. Angel finally spoke. I'm sorry about Aunt Queen, Gerald. She gave real good hugs. Gerald squeezed her hand and smiled a little. She sure did, Angel. The best in the world. Who's going to hug us now?